So I gave y'all a Bricks Introduction Beginner's Guide video and y'all gave me my life, okay? <laughs> I just want to say that I was not expecting the response back from that video, which I think has almost 90,000 views in less than a month. I simply wanted to do my own research and had been holding on to that video for a couple of months and was hesitant to put it out there because I just knew like most people know about this and why would they listen to me about this? Um, and I'm here to tell you, if you have a goal and you want to do a thing, do the thing. Don't let your own self-doubt stop you from doing the thing. Believe it or not, it is still a thing that I deal with in, in sharing content and being versatile and making sure that I'm providing content that is valuable. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of the people that liked that content, that shared it with someone, that found it valuable. You helped me to really self-actualize in an entirely different way um, to be able to deliver economic information in a way that I've always wanted to. You know, I always have looked at myself as an economist, but it wasn't something that I really thought I could do because we most of the time see only white men, economists, right? We don't see black women. So it's really been a beautiful experience to see that video get so much uh, positive response and for people to find value in it. So thank you to everyone who watched that video, who is here and subscribed to the channel because of that video. Welcome back and welcome to the channel. Um, you know, on my channel, Ashley in Africa, I talk about my experience living, moving, and doing business here on the continent of Africa. I am the creator of Africa Investors Academy. I teach professionals, entrepreneurs, and aspiring entrepreneurs how to start a business, expand a business, and um, invest in assets and projects to help them retire early. And if that sounds interesting to you, please be sure to subscribe. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel, hit notifications so you'll get access to information as I post it um, and share it with someone who would find value in it. And thank you to all of our subscribers as we're growing. I'm so grateful for the, the, the community that is growing here, the positive feedback, um, you know, it's been beautiful and transparently being here on the ground in the, in this country, in Tanzania, um, seeing the opportunity, seeing the growth that is happening here on the continent. Um, when I started to explore different alliances, economic alliances, I wanted to know how they were going to create the future of South Africa, of this continent of Africa, um, as I am invested in these countries, as I am, you know, I'm bought in, you know, like I moved myself and my two girls here two years ago. We have businesses here in Tanzania and South Africa. And I, you know, I wanted to learn more about the regulatory environment. I wanted to learn more about the, the policies that were happening that were going to affect me and my investment. And BRICS happens to be the economic juggernaut that it seems to be making the most progress globally and, um, you know, economically here on the continent. And so in this video, I'm going to give you some updates. I highly suggest that you stay in this algorithm and you get more information and do additional research because things are moving quickly in this BRICS economic alliance that has essentially become BRICS plus. So we'll get into that. And if you have an interest in getting involved in figuring out how you can best leverage your income, your investments. Um, I will tell you how you can get involved. Stay till the end. And I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, some, some ways that you can get involved um, to, you know, diversify your investment. So as a reminder, BRICS is an economic alliance of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. It is really being called BRICS Plus as several nations are actively joining and expressing interest into this economic alliance. So 
BRICS is, BRICS plus is, and represents 25%. So some of the statistics show 20, 21. So you'll see anywhere from 20 to 26% of the global GDP. That is huge. And 40%, anywhere from 35 to 40. 1% of the world's population. And there are a couple things that I want to say even about these numbers, right? Being here in Tanzania, this is one of the fastest growing, has Dar es Salaam is one of the fastest growing populations in the world. There is still, and I was here for the census. I was here a few months ago when they did the, the, the countrywide census and everybody doesn't participate in that. Right. Like even with the most efficient processes. And I mean, I'm telling you, they came by my house at least three times to double check. But there are people in the rural villages, the rural parts of the bush that I'm sure are not getting counted. So when we're talking about 40 percent of the world's population, my eyes are that, you know, parts of the continent, even some of these companies, these countries that are joining, they still have underdeveloped populations, underdeveloped parts of their country that are not being counted in this population. And forgive the back noise, it's my water pump. Our data is here taking care of us, so you'll hear some background noise. But um, also as it pertains to the GDP, seeing the opportunity for growth um, even just in infrastructure, even in just agriculture, manufacturing, these countries have literally barely scraped the surface of their economic output. And so while these numbers represent 25% and 40%, my hypothesis is that they're substantially higher than that. So let's just take that into consideration and, and recognize that this is a major economic conglomerate, essentially a waking giant. Okay. So some of the other countries that have expressed interest I've mentioned in the previous video were um, Nigeria, Egypt, um, more recently, Algeria. Um, I've heard of Turkey, you know, expressing formal interest, but the biggest um, interest, formal interest expressed that has been expressed, um, which is creating the most kind of shakeup globally is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has expressed formal interest in joining the BRICS plus nation. And this is a significant sign that the world is looking to move away from the Western dominance structure. So I'll speak a little bit about Saudi Arabia. Again, I am not a historian, but there has been an economic alliance between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. for decades. The president, don't quote me, but I'll link a couple videos for you to do your own research below. The president that enacted this agreement essentially was providing um, U.S. military defense to Saudi Arabia as one of, at the time, one of the world's highest producers of oil. And then in um, return for that military defense, Saudi Arabia supplied oil to America um, at, you know, a specific pricing, creating what became the petrodollar agreement. Since then, the U.S. has been doing its own thing, breaking the alliance in several ways. But with that... Saudi Arabia has says, okay, we're going to explore our options. And those options now include expressing interest, formal interest into this BRICS economic alliance. Um, and so with that, they will also be seeking military defense from these BRICS, um, you know, these BRICS countries. And although I am not speaking about BRICS as a military alliance, we have to recognize that anytime there is an economic alliance, military is, you know, is behind it. So I'll leave that there. So with that, um, you know, Saudi Arabia is really bringing a lot of of news to the table about this kind of formal expression. This is a huge shift in economic power 
Um, and I'm surprised that it's still not really making Western news, but I'm not surprised because they do a really good job of keeping people's head in the sand and, you know, just totally oblivious to what is actually happening in the world. As long as they're consuming, as long as they're spending money, the U.S. is happy. So let's get into some of these sanctions. Um, and so as we know, there is a war happening in Russia um, excuse me, in Ukraine, between Russia and Ukraine. And months ago, when the U.S. imposed sanctions on Russia, you know, we heard about McDonald's pulling out and Visa, MasterCard, you know, canceling cards and things like that. Um, you had about a dozen Western countries that also imposed these sanctions, making it hard for Russians to cross the border into their countries. That was a dozen countries. There are over 140 countries that didn't impose these sanctions. And so why they will, while they will have you believing that the Russian economy is like, like crashed, the reality is that isn't true. I'd say I was even in South Africa a couple months ago and they were looking to hire some South African artists to perform at a festival in Russia. Like... I'm not saying it's all good, but I am saying that Russia is a massive country and they're still actively doing business. And as far as the BRICS uh, countries go, they never said anything. They never imposed any sanctions. They didn't say it loudly, but they said it with their power, with their economic influence, and they did nothing. And so let's look at what these 14 countries that did or dozen countries that did impose sanctions, they represent about 1.5 billion people. The other 140 countries that did nothing, that kind of just stayed neutral or just stayed out of it, they represent 6.5 billion people. So they're looking, you know, this is a positive trend towards the BRICS alliance. And, you know, a Russian academic wrote that this was a sign of what happens when you get out of line with the U.S. And so not only was it actually a thing that happened, it is something that other countries took note of. Like, oh, okay, so when you don't fall in line with what U.S. wants you to do, they will threaten to crumble your economy. And there was a moment in what I believe is parliament, I'm not sure if that's the correct term, in South Africa, a South African legislator had a very bold statement to make to a American um, official saying, you know, we are friends and we value our relationship with you, but we will not be bullied into doing what you want us to do, essentially, is what she said. And that you know, had to do with um, denouncing the, the relationship between Russia and South Africa. And so, yeah, I mean, these things are actively happening. They're, they're taking form and it's a bit fuzzy, but it's showing to be an, a, an alliance that, you know, is standing, they're standing firm in their relationship and they are a better prepared group than any other, you know, individual economic alliance. And I'd say even the Western countries, right? Look at what's happening in the EU, in the UK, to the, the price of the dollar, to these other um, countries that have this Western influence, right? They're, they're not doing so well. And so, yes, things are going to get harder and worse before they get better. But, you know, let's just pay attention to what is happening? Moscow and Beijing, you know, the major, major uh, metropolitan cities in Russia and China, they are seeking a re reconstruction of the world order. And as some of the biggest consumers of oil in the world, these strategic alliances are helping them. You know, they've got now the biggest backing of oil creators in the world with Saudi Arabia, with Nigeria, with Russia, and some of these untapped countries in Africa that have oil that aren't talking about it yet. So yeah, this is a very powerful alliance. And, you know, essentially it's like the West versus the world. And listen, 
we all know the U.S. has a history of not taking things lightly when it comes to um, standing against the U.S. in the American way. And so no one is assuming that they're just going to take this laying down, right? No one is assuming that, not even me. Um, but they have made threats to Saudi Arabia, saying that there will be consequences for cutting their production to the U.S. Um, and, you know, in creating instability among the pricing of the barrel of oils and all of the inflation that we're seeing in the price of, of oil. But let's not, let's be clear. The inflation that has been created in the U.S. has been created by the U.S. It has not been created by these foreign countries, which they would like you to believe the war, you know, in the Ukraine and the oil prices. No. Inflation is created by frivolous government spending, and the U.S. has put themselves in this position while they are trying to threaten other countries to get in line. And, you know, Saudi Arabia is, is calling their bluff, as is China. Um, they've threatened to weaken the security for Saudi Arabia from Iran, saying that they're going to, you know, pull back some of their security. And so... Saudi Arabia is said to have been, you know, creating these defense agreements with Russia and China. Um, and so it's said that the U.S. is preparing economically. They're preparing um, defensively. They are, are also, you know, preparing socially and politically, economically and defensively. Right. And uh, there was a statement that was pulled from the NATO, the 68th NATO defense, um, the 68th NATO conference, annual session of the NATO conference in the Parlata Parliamentary Assembly from a General Jess Stoltenberg saying that, I quote, what we are doing in Ukraine is just the beginning. We are preparing for the big one. What is the big one? Nobody knows. Um, and there has said to been a response by China saying the U.S. should alter their course or face an inevitable conflict. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, politics, politics. They say war is politics with violence um, and economics is war without violence. Um, both are seeming to happen right now. And, you know, who knows? Again, continue to do your research. But what we know is that when things change, people often don't deal with change very well. And um, it seems like BRICS is, is here to say BRICS Plus is growing and the U.S. is, you know, they're 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 trying to remain in their in their spot and i wouldn't even say they're in the number one spot they've tried to convince much of the world that they are but the the curtain and the veil has been has been pulled back you know i'd say let's let's close this out with some positivity um you know there has been talks about a BRICS currency so i believe putin even announced that there would be this BRICS currency um you know between china india and russia some people have you know projected that this will be a digital currency. We'll get into that in a moment. But essentially, this currency will be a reevaluation of gold. And, you know, I see some people in the comments saying that U.S., you know, is the, one of the largest owners of gold. And that is just completely inaccurate. Um, over the last couple of years, foreign um, entities have been taking back their gold um, at like crazy rates. And you've got family offices buying gold. You've got these unknown entities that are like not even named, that are not even regulated, that are like sitting on outside in outshore accounts buying up absorbent, absorbent amounts of gold. Um, and so the U.S. is not the number one holder of gold. And then let's get into the continent of Africa and how there is the most unmined gold in the world here on this continent. So um, yes, this, this is said to be a reevaluation of the gold um, asset, but you know, digital assets are absolutely here to stay. I know that 
if you're if you're invested in crypto, we're all taking a hit, you know, me included. Um, you know, there are going to be these highs and lows, you know, removing some of these, you know, bad guys and bad players that did actually capitalize off of the boom of crypto, but digital assets are absolutely here to stay. It is something around the innovation of um, regulation that these countries like, right? Russia, China, South Africa, um, the highest adopted, you know, use of crypto in the world um, outside of the U.S. And so these are assets that are here to stay and we'll continue to pay attention to them. XRP is something that is being said to pay attention to. Um, but this is not financial advice. Absolutely do your own research. But guys, if you're interested in this type of content, pay attention. I'll link a couple of other creators below. There are some Americans that are creating this content, um, you know, I haven't seen any black folks created this content, so I'm happy that I'm able to share content to a community that typically wouldn't get access to it or wouldn't find it in their algorithm. So if you have an interest in getting more involved, being interested in how you can leverage your investment portfolio, getting diversified, learn more about Africa Investors Academy, I will leave the link below in the description. You can visit ashleyinafrica.com forward slash Africa Investors Academy. We are a community of entrepreneurs, strategists, advisors. Uh, we get access to Africa news, world news as it affects the African continent, um, deal flow, investment opportunities, advisement from attorneys and strategists on different policies as it pertains to foreign investors. And I'm so excited. We're growing. The community is growing. And if you have an interest in getting involved, please join us over there on the Discord. But if you found this content valuable, please be sure to like it share it with someone else who would find value in it, and be sure to subscribe to the channel to get updates when I post new content like this next. So until the next video, I'll see you soon.